locate that uh, chat box and toggle the two icon from all panelists to all panelists and attendees to ensure we can see your questions and comments as we progress today. For now, let us know where you're logging in from and how your morning's going. We'll get started in about two minutes. Oh, welcome Kathy from Winchester. I can see we just started our Facebook live stream. Welcome to those that are watching on Facebook. That chat box is not moderated. If you'd like to participate in the chat box, sign up for the webinar next time. We'll share information for that at the end. Welcome Stephen, Carol, Donna. So glad that you're here today. Welcome Robert. All right, for those that are just logging in, we're gonna get started in the next minute. We're so glad that you've joined us for Job Club today. For now, locate the chat box, toggle the two icon from all panelists to all panelists and attendees to ensure we can see your questions and comments as we progress through the content today. We've got a great speaker lined up for you today. Slides look awesome. So we're excited to get started very soon. If you're watching on Facebook Live, know that that chat box is not moderated and in the future, sign up for the webinar version if you would like to participate. Oh, welcome, Tanya. Glad you're here. Thanks for logging in. All right, we're going to get started in the next minute. For those that are just joining, we're so grateful that you've joined us today. For now, locate that chat box, toggle the two icon from all panelists to all panelists and attendees to ensure we can see your questions and comments today. Oh, welcome, Peg, Matthew, Kyle. So glad that you're here and logged in with us today. Thanks for joining. All right, I think we're ready to get started and I'm going to pass the torch over to Diana. Welcome everyone absolutely to Job Club this, uh, what I want to call a sunny day, uh, at least in central Kentucky and I'm hearing throughout in the chat box some of the rest of you are, are talking about the sunshine and we want to welcome you here. Um, we are, want to also be sure and welcome our employees and recruiters. Um, and as uh, Amanda has uh, uh, denoted, not here at if you're on Facebook Live, um, we won't, we won't, you will not have the opportunity to participate uh, in the chat box, but you can obviously uh, join us. And then if you want to do that, be sure and register through our Zoom webinar next time. Uh, we'd like to adhere to a regular uh, agenda, and it would be welcoming our success stories, our main speaker, we're so excited today, sharing of active job leads, partner updates, and then we're going to tell you about the next opportunity at Job Club. I'd like to introduce our team. Uh, these are Job Club facilitators. I am Diana Doggett. I'm the County Extension Agent for Family and Consumer Sciences. Uh, Caroline Francis is Director of Alumni Career Services, along with Amanda Shagney, who is the Associate Director, and Nicole Wake is with an, an Employment Specialist with UK Steps, and we also shout out to Ellie and Hannah and Suzanne, um, our somewhat behind the scene team, but so, so, so very important. So meet your team. Our mission uh, is to provide a positive environment for job seekers to network and learn best practices for the job search. So keep in mind, circle the second and fourth Tuesday of each month, and uh, you can find a schedule of our topics at www.ukalumni.net slash job club. So you'll see all of the remaining spring sessions um, uh, described there. And we are continuing to, uh, to meet in uh, via Zoom webinar because of COVID-19. We want to welcome our first timers. This is always a, uh, a special, special segment of Job Club because we are glad you're here. And uh, we also want you to know that you'll receive a follow-up survey later today. And that feedback will place you in our notification system for future programs and our um, our newsletters that we follow up with as well. So welcome to all of our first timers. And again, use that chat box. Let us know where you're from, um, the county, the city, the state, the country. Um, we are, we always love to, to know where our audience is listening and viewing from. We do want to remind you that we have some wonderful free resources um, and you can review those. Uh, at, again, www.ukalumni.net. 
And um, some of those some of those uh, resources are job search uh, questions and answers, uh, Central Kentucky networking opportunities, uh, interview tips, and just a lot of great information, resume re review checklist. And uh, so check those out. They're free and uh, they're available whenever you need them. And then we want to remind you to join the Central Kentucky Job Club Sharing Community on LinkedIn. And you're going to hear a lot about LinkedIn each and every session at Job Club because it is the go-to, currently the go-to place for employers to uh, scan out prospective um, employees that might just meet their, their, their descriptions. And now we are going to talk about success stories. And uh, I've got two wonderful ones to share today. Um, and, and you're going to find that to be routine because uh, Job Club does deliver. And we, we, we just rejoice in that with our attendees and those that we work with. So I'm going to share two, but while, while I do that, uh, take the opportunity to um, think about your success over the last couple of weeks or month. Um, what have you done that has forwarded you in your search uh, for employment, for a job? And again, it's not just always landing a job like these two I'm going to read today. We, we, will, we will be reading yours eventually, we hope. But um, uh, share what you've done as far as resumes or networking. Um, as I recall, our last session was branding. So if you've done something that uh, was uh, uh, introduced in that presentation, let us know that. So just take this opportunity in the chat box and uh, we'll, that will encourage and, and uh, motivate everyone that, uh, that is joining us today. First of all, I want to share uh, a letter. It is, I recently found a job with L3 Harris in Mason, Ohio. I owe the success to the outstanding team at the UK Alumni Career Center and the fantastic job club meetings I attended. I had not actively looked for a job in 15 years and things have changed quite a lot. I benefited greatly from resume reviews and interview preparation to get me in the right mindset. The Job Club guest speakers were amazing and shared great tips. Just to name a couple. Number one, when asked for your salary requirement, answer by asking, is there a salary range for the position? You may be pleasantly surprised. Number two, interview techniques and helpful ways to answer questions discussed in a job club meeting, such as answering in a conversational style to get interaction from the interviewer. And number three, ways to answer the difficult question, what is your biggest weakness? This was discussed at a job club meeting and I thought it was very helpful. I had always heard of social networking, but really learned how to leverage it to its full extent using LinkedIn. Ultimately, I found this position through social networking. A friend of a friend got me in touch with the right people. Again, I cannot thank the UK Alumni Career Center and Job Club enough for all of the coaching, guest speakers, advice, and support through my job search. I am thankful to have found such a great opportunity during this difficult job market. Thanks, Sam West. So, you know, you can, you can give us an applause there in the chat box if you like, but we are thrilled for Sam um, and just um, we're so excited to get his, his message. I have one more to share today. I just wanted to give you an update on my career after attending Job Club a few years back. As you may recall, I was trying to change careers in hope to become a risk control consultant in the insurance industry after a long career in the environmental industry. That didn't immediately work out. And instead, I became a safety coordinator at Fanatics Inc. in Louisville, as well as a high mileage compute commuter. In the meantime, I interviewed for a couple of risk control positions in the last few years to no avail. One position they decided to do away with completely after a couple of interviews. One was given to a subcontractor 
who had worked with the company. Another was given to someone else's buddy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, the fifth time was chart and proves that someone in their 50s can change careers and in industries. It's been a long journey and one that I think I will have, will have worked out for the very best. It was definitely worth keeping up with the connections and having my eyes and ears open. Thanks again to the job club for giving me the skills and somewhat confidence to help me in my success. You all are a great benefit to the community. Thanks again, Matthew Wittich, and he's an MBA, CSP. So Matthew, we know you can't join us today, but we are again, um, applaud you for your perseverance. Um, you, you stuck it out and we couldn't be happier to get that, that, that success story today. So hopefully um, we, we, we're, we're gonna move on. Those were two long ones, but um, if you do have any, anything that you wanna share in the uh, chat box, then be sure and do that. Um, um, again, there's no success is, is too little uh, when you're on that journey. And we recognize that at Job Club and we know that um, it does take, uh, it take, it's a process. And I think today's, uh, today's uh, presentation is really going to reaffirm that. All right, so you have those, put those in. And um, we are going to introduce our speaker now so that we can get started. Uh, it is my privilege to welcome our guest speaker, John Caldwell. Um, I'm going to read a bio and then just turn it over to, to you, John. Uh, John was named Senior Vice President and Chief People Officer in April 2020. In this role, he is responsible for the strategic direction and global leadership of all aspects of human resources, including talent acquisition, total rewards, business consulting, employee relations, organizational development, diversity and inclusion, and corporate communications. Previously senior director, North American HR, John supported the core North American business, global supply chain, and our corporate functions. Joining Valvoline in 2016, he was also responsible for building and leading Valvoline's talent acquisition and organizational development functions immediately after the company went public. Prior to Valvoline, John spent 17 years in progressive human resources and talent management roles with Fifth Third Bancor, U.S. Bancor, and Mer Meridor Inc. He serves on the board of directors for Commerce Lexington. John holds a bachelor's business administration from Eastern Kentucky University and an MBA from Xavier University in Cincinnati. John, we welcome you. We look forward to your sharing, and you have a great audience uh, uh, to whom to present. So, welcome. Welcome back. You've been here before, so we welcome yeah. you back. Thank you, Diana. Yeah, it has been a few years, uh, but pleased to have the opportunity to, to rejoin uh, this group, and, and thank you for that introduction. Um, you know, I'm going to spend a little time today. Uh, well, hold up. I think I'll I think I've gone one too far. There we go. Um, you know, it sounds like based on um, some of those success stories, a lot of what I'm going to talk about today is going to be fairly consistent with some of those success stories and perhaps even content that's been shared in prior sessions here. Um, maybe just to, to, to kick things off, uh, that was a good introduction of me. Let me talk a little bit about uh, where I work, uh, Valvoline. Uh, we're headquartered here, our global headquarters is here in Lexington, Kentucky. Um, some of you may be familiar with the building that's on the upper left-hand corner here um, uh, on the kind of the southeast side of Lexington. It is a building that's sitting largely vacant right now and has for the last 11 months. As you can probably tell, I'm working from my home as are uh, all of our employees who are based um, here in, in the corporate office. You may also know us from uh, a Valvoline Instant Oil Change, one of our retail service centers uh, that are located throughout the country. And actually we're now starting to expand those into China. 
Um, and that's the other thing I would mention. A lot of people maybe don't realize, but Babylon is a global organization. Uh, we have a, a presence in 23 different countries uh, and overall about 10,000 employees um, across the globe. We um, uh, not only you know, provide kind of that retail service, but you know, we can deliver your products to you if, if you're a do-it-yourselfer. Uh, you can certainly go into a Walmart, AutoZone, Advanced Auto Parts and purchase our product or you can go to another installer channel like a tire center or a dealership uh, and they may be putting Valvoline products into your vehicle. Um, the exciting thing uh, that I would mention is, you know, Valvoline has been around for quite a while. Some of you who are, are local to the central Kentucky area um, may remember, uh, we were part of Ashland Oil for a number of years. And then in 2016, actually became our own uh, publicly traded company. Uh, in September of 2016. So in a lot of ways that, you know, we like the term that we use sometimes is we're kind of like this 150 year old startup. So it's been an exciting time to be at Valvoline uh, over the last few years because we're really in build mode and there's a lot of new innovation that's going on. Um, you know, even from just standing ourselves up as our own publicly traded company, a lot of build and design of programs and processes. Um, you know, as, as I dive into uh, the content today, the first thing I'll say is, um, you know, I'm approaching this not only as someone who's worked in HR for, you know, his entire career, um, but also someone who has, um, you know, not too long ago been uh, in the job search process myself. So I had a 14 year run uh, that ended with fifth third. Uh, my position was eliminated in 2016. And so a lot of what I'll share on the subsequent slides here are things that really I took to heart and that helped me with my own personal job search uh, just about four years ago. And you know, the, the three things that I would say here, you know, the, the title of, of the, the topic or the title of the presentation today is that, you know, a career search is a, is a full-time job. Um, and I think these three characteristics are, are critical to that, right? You know, it, focus is important. You, you're going to spend a lot of time, as you guys, some of you who have been, you know, in the career search now for a while may have already learned. Um, but the better you can target, you know, what you want to do, where you want to go, uh, the more uh, efficient that time will be spent. I, discipline, you know, I think um, it is a full-time job. So it may be that you've got kind of a schedule or a calendar of these are my to-do items today. This is who I'm reaching out to, so on and so forth. And that may take, you know, eight to five or even longer. Um, so being disciplined and, and organized in that search certainly helps. And then persistence, you know, certainly a couple of the success stories that were shared uh, by Diana really speak to that. You know, that, that sometimes it, it takes two, three, four different runs, five, I think the fifth time's a charm uh, comment resonates there uh, with the same organization uh, and just a different role to finally break through uh, like this, I don't know if this is a plant or a weed, <laughs> but either way, it's, it's persistent and breaking through uh, the asphalt here. Um, you know, th the other thing I'll say is there's no secret sauce. There's no magic bullet with the job search. Um, it, it, I think these three characteristics are critical. And what I'll share may not necessarily be anything new, but I like to think about these types of presentations is, is if, you know, hey, there's, if there's one or two things that you do differently, as a result of you know the next handful of slides that I share and cover with you, um, hopefully that's time well spent because that one practice or that one new behavior may be the difference in in landing that role or not landing that role. You know, I'm going to the format of, of what I'll cover is really kind of outlined in these steps to success. So this is a bit of a table of contents here um, that we'll run through. You know, it, it starts in these first two uh, steps with really a, a bit of a self-discovery that'll help you focus those efforts. Um, and then, you know, three, four, and five are just, once you have that foot in the door, you know, how do you win the selection process? And again, make sure that, um, uh, that you're remaining persistent in your approach. So let's start, you know, talking about that self-discovery. Um, and, and the, I heard uh, mention, it sounds like in the last uh, job club session, that personal branding was the topic. And, and that's really what a lot of, of this slide represents and even the next slide. Um, it's just starting with uh, what do you, well, I'm sorry, starting with what do you wanna do? Later on, we'll talk a little bit about personal branding. Um, but, you know, it's kind of where you, you need to know where you wanna go. And this kind of, it really speaks to that focus piece here. 
Um, and this is actually, you know, the example that you've got on the slide is actually the, the, uh, the marketing plan or excerpts of the marketing plan that I developed a few years ago when I was on kind of a personal journey for a career search here. Um, and it starts with kind of defining what that professional objective is. Um, you know, and you see here, you know, kind of elements of the things that I've documented here. And I do think it's important to document it um, because it's, it's a little bit of, um, uh, it'll, help, it'll help that focus. It'll help you kind of think through, if you're like me, it kind of helps you think through the, th um, you know, kind of your, your thoughts and, and arrange them in a way that is, that allows you to better discipline and, and focus your search. Um, so I had a couple of things here, you know, I was either looking to lead a talent management uh, function for a large uh, organization that may report into a chief people officer sort of role, or maybe be the top HR leader in a smaller organization. Um, and then also was open to, to consulting personally, you know, but had a limit there around, you know, I've got a family, so I didn't want to be on the road more than 50% of the time. So I think is, I would challenge you is, is if you haven't thought about this and really targeted that focus or, or targeted your efforts, this is a great place to start. Um, you know, I, I think a challenge even from an employer perspective sometimes is when someone will contact us uh, in the HR department and the talent acquisition part, department and they haven't really done this and they're open and it can almost feel like it sometimes, you know, hey, they're wanting that talent acquisition partner to help them figure out what's right. You know, hey, I'm just looking for a job, right? Can you help me figure out what's best or what, uh, you know, where I might fit in? Um, and so really it, it, the first good step here is, is to kind of target, what do you want to do? Um, the second piece is target markets. And I've got market meaning geography. Um, you know, it's important to, you know, th this was something I wrestled with. Uh, I moved here from Cincinnati, so it wasn't a, a, a significant relocation, um, but did pick up my family and new schools for the kids and that sort of thing, uh, and was open to kind of a, a regional sort of, of relocation at the time. But that's critical, I would say, because that's a lot of times going to be the first question that you'll receive. And it also, again, helps you focus in uh, when you go out to a job site, whether it's LinkedIn, Indeed, um, you, you can know, you know, where do, where do you want to search and you won't waste your time looking for roles that ultimately you're really not going to be interested in. Now, the other caveat I would say is the world has changed in the last year and you're certainly going to see a lot more organizations open to remote work where relocation may not be necessary uh, versus, you know, what the situation was, you know, four years ago or so when, when I was uh, in the job search process. Valvoline, we've certainly become more open to remote work in the last year. Um, industry type, you know, this is something that may or may not be as relevant for you, but if there's a type of industry that you're interested in, you know, I was, um, you know, had some things listed here that were less desirable. And ultimately, I had worked in banking, uh, two different banks. So I had been in banking for about 16, 18 different years or 18 years and was looking for a change. So that was something that was important to me. And then culture, you know, it's interesting because I, I dusted this presentation off uh, earlier or a couple of weeks ago. And um, I will tell you that um, one reason why I've been so happy over the last four years is when I look at the culture I was looking for and then I compare that to how I would define Valvoline, very similar. So this was more critical to me than, than industry type. Um, but what's the type of organization that you're working with? What values? are personally important to you, and you may want to seek those out uh, in the organization's values and the culture that, that, uh, that they reflect. And then target companies. You know, as you're creating your marketing plan, um, once you say, okay, these are the types, this is the type of role that I want, these are my target market, target uh, geography, industry, culture, the type of culture I want, then you can start to do some research on companies. And I created a pretty long list here. And I think this isn't even the entire list because I had you know, another set of cities uh, that I didn't wanna you know, feel the need to copy on this slide, but there's a lot of companies that I put on here. Um, and I started with, with a number of companies and then start to research and I'm researching them against the types of roles that I see there. You know, I was a human, I'm a human resource professional, so I can go in and search you know, uh, Macy's HR and I can read the job descriptions and see hey, based on these job descriptions, is this look like the type of HR function that I'm going to be interested in? 
Are they going to have roles that are going to be, you know, relevant for me that are going to, you know, mirror the experience that I have or what I want to do next? And so you can learn a lot about organizations, you know, just by going on their website, but even looking at their job descriptions and seeing what types of roles that they have. It also, a lot of times they'll describe, you know, their culture and their values uh, in these job descriptions. The other advantage I think of um, targeting companies is I would literally, you know, um, this was back in the day when we could have, you know, uh, coffee with one another or lunch with one another, um, but you can do this virtually as well, right? If you're having a Zoom coffee, if you will, networking coffee, I would encourage you to document, you know, your target list of companies. And then, you know, as you're having that networking coffee, um, again, one thing Diana mentioned is a lot of times in one of the success stories, it's not the person that you're having a virtual coffee with that's going to land you the role, but it's the person they know or the person they know who knows someone who works at, you know, one of these organizations of Valvoline, Churchill Downs, Cincinnati Bell, et cetera. And so I would just pull up, you know, and if I was having coffee with somebody, I would, you know, put this on the table and just say, hey, here are the target companies that I'm looking for. Do you know anybody that works here that you can connect me with? Um, and you'll find that's much more, um, uh, you know, the success rate is going to be much higher with that than it is with something like just a, a kind of a random LinkedIn connection and reach out. Those can be successful too, but I guarantee your hit rate is going to be better. And it's obvious, right, if you've got a personal referral that somebody can make for you. The, um, the next thing, just kind of defining, what do you bring to the table? Step two of two, I would say, is, is the positioning statement. So, um, you know, uh, th this is a little bit of, my, of an elevator speech, in my opinion. You know, a lot of times when you have those, those opportunities to network, um, whether it's virtual, whether it's in person, whether it is an introduction on LinkedIn, you know, how do you be as succinct as possible, but how do you, you know, show some originality and really kind of clearly and concisely articulate what you bring to the table. And so, you know, if you can get that down and kind of, you know, they say elevator speech because hopefully it's something that can be contained in a short elevator ride. Um, and that's what I tried to do here uh, with this personal elevator speech. It's a little bit of, you know, what experience, what skills do I bring to the table uh, that may be unique or may, um, you know, uniquely position me, uh, qualify me for, uh, the role or um, an opportunity at the organization. So if you haven't, you know, documented this, then practiced rehearsing that, um, you know, you'll find you'll, you'll use it over and over again, um, you know, as, uh, you know, because it generally is going to come up in the first, you know, few minutes of every conversation. There's going to be some variation of, you know, well, what are you looking for? What do you want to do? Um, you know, what really excites you? you know, what do you think that you can bring to the table? Um, this positioning statement, I think, will help help you define um, what that is. And then, you know, the other thing I would say is what do you have to offer is just competencies and skills. The difference here is, you know, the, the positioning statement may be a little more broader than competencies and skills. Again, it starts to crystallize a little bit. You know, the, the things that you believe you really bring to the table that are, are perhaps towering strengths of yours or things that have led to your success or things that might be unique uh, to you as, as a candidate. The other th the reason why I like to document these uh, separately is, again, matching these up with the job description. A lot of times, again, companies have kind of given you, you know, kind of the cheat sheet of what they're looking for. <laughs> And so sometimes even the words or the phrases that they use, um, you know, you might be able to tweak, you know, your talk track to mirror those words or phrases. Um, again, this also, I think, is another step in, in helping you brand who you are and, and what you bring to the table. Um, and being able to pull these things out, I, I think it's even just a helpful exercise um, to kind of think through this. Um, Another way of just planning to make sure or, or to, you know, as certainly as you can be, as certain as you can be, make sure that you're prepared for that opportunity when, when the spotlight's on and you're, you're in that conversation or in that interview. So kind of, we've talked a little bit about that self-discovery now, right? You know, what do you want to do and, and what do you bring to the table? 
you know, now it's, it's, it's all about getting your foot in the door. Um, and again, I don't know that there's going to be anything that's going to be, you know, revol revolutionary here. Um, a lot of, um, uh, you, you know, what, what was mentioned in the, even in some of the success stories. LinkedIn is the by far number one networking tool that, that's available. Um, there's a good news and a bad news with that. The good news is, is you've got access to just a ridiculous number of people, right? The bad news is, is that access is very easy. <laughs> and so, you know, the, 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 the advice that I would give someone is don't get frustrated um, if you've sent out, you know, LinkedIn messages and you don't always get a response. Um, you know, that ease of access is a blessing, but the challenge with that is, is it is very easy for people to, to reach out to, you know, decision makers, hiring managers, uh, HR, talent acquisition leaders within organizations. Um, additionally, I'll speak for myself. I mean, it is also very easy for vendors to do the same thing. So it's not uncommon. I'll just use myself as an example. I probably get 20 to 25 just vendor solicitations a day via LinkedIn. Um, so it, it can be difficult to keep up. So I, I, I'm probably, you know, um, would, would say maybe give some of the folks that you may be reaching out to a little bit of grace there. It, it's maybe what you've heard about job applications as well. Uh, sometimes, you know, companies can make it very easy where it's a one click and I apply. Um, but then you may not hear something because it's so easy for people to apply that, you know, you've got this one recruiter who's got 30 open positions that they're recruiting for. Each position can get, you know, dozens or hundreds of applications. And it's just, there's just not enough time sometimes. So I, I would, you know, say though that still LinkedIn is absolutely the best tool to use. It is absolutely efficient and effective, but it just, this is where that persistence comes in that you may, you know, and you, you may have already learned this, right? I don't know what the hit rate is, again, without that warm lead, um, but it's probably gonna be, you know, far less than, than 50%. But don't get frustrated. Um, and you know what, again, maybe you try to reach out a couple of different times to that person that you, you believe, you know, based on your research that, hey, this person's probably the hiring manager of the role that I'm really interested in based on their title, you know, go for it. I mean, you know, send them a couple of messages and, and just see, um, you know, it, it never hurts to try, try and try again, or maybe, you know, search someone else, see if you can find someone based on job title who might work in the department or a recruiter in the organization. Um, you know, there's a lot of times that I'll see candidates and, and I usually, what I will tell you is I'm much more open to folks who reach out to me from a candidate perspective than, you know, a vendor perspective. Um, and there's a lot of situations where I'll, you know, forward someone who's reached out to me, I'll forward their profile if they've reached out to me on LinkedIn to, you know, my team or coworkers. And, you know, inevitably, they've also already reached out to a number of, of those individuals as well. And so now they're connected to three or four of us. Um, you know, the more shots you take, the more likely you are to hit, right? Um, I've got on here, you know, networking obviously is just critical. Um, it, it, again, it's back to, you, you just don't know. A lot of times it's probably not even the person that you're having that networking conversation with, um, but if they can be a bit of a, a hub for you to connect you with a number of other people at those target organizations, that is the best use of time that, that you can have. Um, again, probably a little bit of a blessing and a curse in the virtual world, world that we're in right now. I mean, the, the challenge is, you know, you're not gonna be able to have you know, coffee like Alec Baldwin and Jerry Seinfeld are doing here in a lot of instances, although things are starting to open back up. But the beauty is we've all become so much more comfortable with, you know, video conferencing like on Zoom and Teams that you could perhaps even be more efficient. And it's so much easier to network with people outside of, you know, your, your current location uh, in this way. So um, again, back to the, the blessing and curse piece there. But just encourage you to, to stay active uh, with your networking efforts. Um, ultimately, that's where, you know, it feels like nine of 10 roles are found, you know, is through that friend of a friend. So you, you've, you know, defined kind of, you know, what, where you want to go, what you bring to the table, 
um, you know, how do, you've gotten your foot in the door and now you're, you're in front of the hiring manager, you're in front of the, the, the HR leader, the, the talent acquisition leader. How do you win with that selection process? And, and I think it really starts with that preparation with upfront, you know, researching the company. You've got, I've got a couple sites here listed. There are hundreds of them. You can go to their website, but the more you can show that you're, you know, educated on who they are, that you've, you've researched their values, you, you're talking about how they align with yours. Every little bit helps. Um, in a lot of cases, once you get to this um, uh, step in the process, it's not just a yes, no decision. Um, a lot of times employers are in the good spot where they may have, um, you know, four yeses and they're trying to pick the best yes the best qualified candidate. So every little bit helps, every bit is an edge. As you're researching, you know, the other thing I'll, I'll flip to the right, the question mark here, inevitably or generally every interviewer is going to say, you know, well, what questions can I answer for you? Um, be prepared with a few good questions and, and try to be specific, try to make those original. Um, and you can also showcase the homework that you've done or the research that you've done on the company uh, based on the questions that you ask as well. Um, tell me about a time when, you know, a, a lot of interviewers are still going to use behavioral style interviewing. Um, and so a couple of things that I would say here, what they're looking for is, and, and they may, you know, most of you may be familiar with these, but it may be, tell me about a time when, you know, you dealt with uh, a challenging project and you overcame the odds. Uh, tell me about a time when, you know, you disagreed with your manager on a direction that they were going and you, you know, tried to influence them, you know, to change course or you couldn't do that. And then you had to still, you know, lead the team forward, even though you didn't fully believe in, uh, you know, the, 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 or it wasn't your own decision, you know, in the direction that you were heading or tell me about a time, what, tell me about a time when you led a huge enterprise wide project, and so on and so forth. One thing I would say is, companies are looking for what's called kind of the star here in your response. So the star is, you know, the ST is situation or task. So in your response, you outline it in this star way and you start with the situation or task, you know, well, I was, you know, at our organization, we were working to implement a new customer onboarding process. Boom, there's the situation or task. The A is action. So your action might be, um, you know, I, I was asked to lead the, the, the project and the first thing that I did was X, Y, and Z. And then I pulled together a team and we did ABC um, over the course of a few months, you know, the solution that we came up with looked something like this. And then R is the result. So situation or task, action, and then result. And then as a, re as a result of that, you know, we um, increased our customer retention you know, six month customer retention by 40%, blah, blah, blah. If you can give them that complete star, that's really what they're looking for. And what I encourage um, people to do when, when they're looking for roles is there are probably a handful of things in your resume that you're really proud of, you know, accomplishments, projects, you know, take a look at your resume, take a look at your, the marketing plan. You know, if, if, you, if you take my advice here and document some of those things, and what are the, the two, three, four different brag points that you wanna bring out in an interview and make sure that you mention? Um, my guess is, is that regardless of the, the, the behavioral interview question that you're asked, you can probably fit most of, or you can probably wedge those brag points into, the, into your response. You know, a lot of times they're in general, they're, they're, they're looking for an opportunity where you, you know, uh, you were working with people, it was a big project, you were driving a change, so on and so forth. And so, you know, that's, I think, how you can prepare is think about those, those bullet points on your resume that you're most proud of, and then turn them into a star. You know, how would I articulate the situation I was facing, the action that I took, what I did, what my role was in that, and then what was the outcome or the result. Um, the final item I've got on here is, is job descriptions. Um, and again, I, 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 you know, do more than just a cursory review of job descriptions. 
because the words that are used in job descriptions, one can give you a sense of maybe the level of, of sophistication of the department that you're, you're, you're interested in. And, and again, I'll use HR as an example, but you could, you could extrapolate this to finance, marketing, whatever. If you've come from a very forward thinking, mature um, function or group, and you can kind of tell, and that's what you want to continue working in. If you look at the job description for an organization, you'll be able to tell. So using HR as an example, is this an, is this an HR function that's focused on building strong organizational culture, talent development? Or when I read the, the thing, is it more about maybe some of the nuts and bolts of HR? Hey, they're focused on payroll and leave of absence administration and benefits, but I don't see much else there that I would classify maybe as strategic or forward thinking. Um, you know, if, if you're working in IT, and same thing, you know, you can get a sense for maybe what type of infrastructure or systems they have. Um, and is that gonna challenge you? Is that gonna satisfy your needs based on the job description that, that, that they've posted? The other thing is it's, it's you know, you've, you've probably heard in interviews um, or just in relating to people, it's kind of mirroring their actions. You know, if they lean forward, you lean forward. If they smile, you smile. If they sit back and cross their legs, maybe you sit back and cross your legs. You can do the same thing with job descriptions. Um, you know, verbiage matters. And maybe sometimes you can get out of that job description. This is the language they use. This is, you know, the phrasing that they use, or these are the skills, the specific skills that they're looking for. And hey, they match what I've documented when I've, you know, captured my skills and competencies, but I'm going to use their verbiage and their language here. Because um, I think that's going to resonate more, more deeply with them. The, the final thing I'll mention here, you know, just, um, kind of, again, we're in this remote environment largely now. Um, and even after, you know, we, we emerge from this, I think you're gonna have organizations that now, who now are much more comfortable interviewing and hiring without even meeting people in person. Um, and so Zoom interviewing, um, virtual interviews are, are much more prevalent. You know, a couple of tidbits I would give there is, is really just try to bring energy. Um, you know, it, it is hard. It, it's hard. I mean, I'll tell you right now, it's much easier for me to give a presentation when I can um, see the audience <laughs> and, and gauge feedback and, and are they tracking with me or not and head nods or laugh if I try to crack some sort of, you know, terrible joke um, versus staring at a blank screen. And so I realize I'm saying that energy piece can be difficult, but um, that, that's a difference maker. And, and um, if you bring energy, um, you're going to get energy back from that interviewer. Um, the other thing is, I would say, um, just think about your background. And I don't know that background is going gonna, is gonna to win you the selection process, but just be mindful of the things that might be in your background. And, and I'll just give you one small example. Um, and it, we ended up not, we ended up moving the candidate forward for this, but it, it's been a talking point, right? We, uh, there was one candidate for a role within Valvoline. And um, in their background, one of the interviewers noticed that when she was interviewing with him, that they had, I don't remember if it was a poster or a wall hanging or something that had a curse word on it. <laughs> so maybe not the best representation. You know, you always say when you're in an interview, you know, it's kind of that, that's his, that's their brand, right? Um, so just think about that. I mean, back to personal brand, you know, that background, I don't think that it has to have, you know, I try to look smart and have a few books back here. Um, it can be a blank wall. I don't think that necessarily a background is going to help you, but just make sure that there's nothing in your background or, you know, part of your presentation that, that, uh, that damages that personal brand. The final thing I'll mention, um, and this relates to either Zoom or virtual interviews or in person, is every interaction matters. So um, we talk about this at Valvoline when we debrief candidates. You know, we're looking for a lot of times the mantra that we have is we're looking for people who are hungry, humble, and smart. And so a piece of that humility may come out uh, in the interactions that they have in between interviews. Um, so if we've got, you know, they check in with our front desk receptionist, um, how did they treat the front desk receptionist? Um, when it's, um, you know, maybe there's, if they're interacting with an executive assistant to, to set up, schedule the interview, you know, what was that interaction like? Uh, maybe it was over the phone, maybe it was via email. So I just, you know, kind of this is the point of you're always on. 
um, and, and not just when you know, you're in front of the hiring manager, but um, at all times, right? So uh, keep that in mind. There may, may not every organization, you know, look at that or, or weave that into their process, but um, I know some do. The final slide I've got here, and then, you know, open it up for, for any questions that you have with the time we have remaining is just stick with it. So this speaks to that persistence uh, point again, you know, I, I, and even discipline on, on kind of keeping track of your conversations and applications. What I did personally with this as a job seeker was I had a couple of different lists. One was just I maintained an Excel spreadsheet of all the jobs that I posted for and the status. You know, if, if I, you know, if I posted on February 1st and then I reached out on February 10th and then I reached out again on February 15th or whatever. The second list was those networking conversations. So, you know, who were the people that I spoke with? What was their company? And what was the outcome of, of that networking conversation? And even with those people, you know, especially if you can find people who are well networked, um, I'll give you an example. I was, again, based in Cincinnati and there was someone, um, our CFO in Cincinnati um, was one of my internal clients that I supported. I, I supported our finance group once upon a time. And his wife was a managing director at Ernst & Young. And so obviously Ernst & Young, you know, in kind of the consulting business, she was connected to tons of different companies. So one of the best people I could have had coffee with at that time because of the number of decision makers that she knew at other companies. So um, keeping track of those conversations and, you know, hey, when I met with uh, Judy, she mentioned that she was going to, you know, connect me with A, B, C, and D companies. So maybe it's following up with them kindly, you know, uh, uh, in, in a couple of weeks because they are busy and maybe the, the follow-up follow-through wasn't uh, maybe timely on their end. Um, if you do it in the right way, people understand the situation that you're in uh, and generally want to help. Um, so that's one way just to keep track of those conversations and your applications. That also, I think, ties to the, to the follow-up and follow-through. Um, and then the final point I'll make, you know, back to, uh, uh, you know, the comment earlier about fifth time's a charm, right? You know, good things can take time. Uh, you know, um, again, back to my personal example, I, I had probably been in the job search market. Um, you know, I, I was, as my time winded down with, uh, with Fifth Third, I was ready for a change um, even before the, my position was eliminated. But I had honestly, guys, probably looked had been in the job market for a couple of years um, and had, you know, hundreds of, of online applications that I submitted and, and networking conversations that, that didn't go anywhere. And so, you know, the, those good things can take time. Um, you know, it, it is hard to kind of be resilient in those moments, um, but um, I just encourage you, you know, that persistence will ultimately pay off. Uh, the better, you know, you can do as far as the homework up front of where you want to go, what you bring to the table, you know, targeting in your, your focus of your search on, um, you know, the markets that you're most interested in, the type of company that you're most interested in, then really investing in those markets, in those companies. Um, the more contacts you can make in the companies, the more FaceTime you can get, the more connections you can make, um, the better your odds are, right? And ultimately, the, the right opportunities out there for you. Um, and I hope in some small way that one or more of these tips uh, can help you find that. So with that, I think um, it might be easiest, I'm told to, if you've got a question that I can answer, um, happy to, uh, to answer those if you wanna put that in the chat. Alrighty, thank you, John. This was a very awesome presentation, uh, full of detail. Uh, you guys, a wealth of information. Uh, I love all these key points here. I spoke about, of course, behavioral based style interviewing, uh, the STAR method, which I know Caroline and Amanda uh, speak about at times. So at this time, with, with all that he has given, if you guys have questions, please submit those questions. Uh, the toggle, toggle here or on the side here on the, in the chat box, we'll be able to see those and get those to John so he can answer them for you guys. So go ahead.
the other thing, while while those are coming in, you know, I'll, I'll give a little plug for Valvoline. We have a number of um, uh, different types of opportunities. That's one cool part about Valvoline. We, you know, obviously I mentioned our global headquarters are here in Lexington, so we kind of run the gamut on those corporate type type roles: IT, finance, marketing, HR, etc. But then sales, engineering, science, scientist roles. We have a, a lab here in Lexington uh, and elsewhere around around the globe. So. Different, and then our, our retail side of our business as well. So, okay. All righty, so John, we do have a question for you. All right. All righty. So the question is, after an interview, how long is an appropriate amount of time to wait before calling to check on the status of the position? Good question. You know, the first thing I would say is um, it could be based on where you left it with that interviewer at the close of the time you had with them. So if they gave you a Hey, you're early in the process just to let you know we've got a couple more candidates that are coming in next week so give us a couple weeks i would wait a couple of weeks um, if that wasn't clarified i would say a good rule of thumb is a week so if you're interviewing with somebody today i would say you know um, and there wasn't any sort of timing that was settled at the end i would say give it till next tuesday as an example okay we do have another question here uh let's see here which is better to post job related research, Twitter or LinkedIn, to show what I am continuing to learn while on a job search? Um, I would say LinkedIn. You know, in, just in general, LinkedIn is going to be more, you know, professional based. Twitter is everything, <laughs> right? Um, so I, I would say, in, in general, LinkedIn. Um, and, and I think the question was referenced of what you've learned about organizations and companies, or maybe even touting yourself. It's also a great place to, to promote yourself online, you know, and, and different certifications that you've acquired or, or experienced or kind of promote yourself as a candidate on LinkedIn. Okay, we do have another question here um, and comment. It says, I found your talk a very motivational and I am not alone in this process. Um, how did you keep up such high energy in the process? You know, um, that's a great question. I, the one thing I will tell you is um, for me, and, and this resonates a lot right now because you're hearing a lot about kind of mental, emotional, and physical wellness. And I will tell you that um, if I think about the, the mental state I was in during that stressful time, I was probably in the best shape of my life. <laughs> And so I think part of that discipline and that daily routine that I had, I made sure that I just didn't wake up and you know open up my laptop and just all day long. So that was one thing I think I, 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 I built an exercise into my routine. The other thing I did was um, I was living in Northern Kentucky at the time and uh, Crossroads Church had this kind of open lobby, uh, Crossroads Church based in Florence, Kentucky. And I would spend, I would go there two or three days a week and they had free coffee. That didn't help. That probably helps with the energy, but it would just get to get me out of out of the house. Um, so I, I went to Crossroads and, and it was just a change of scenery, which probably helped a little bit of that that mental well-being as well to, to change scenery. So I think building those chains of chain change of scenery and the exercise routine. Um, the other thing I would say is I also got energy um, networking and connecting with people. So probably those three things come to mind. It's a good question, though, because it can become, you know, uh, it can become challenging. Very good question. Okay, let's see here. Next question. Can you suggest strategy to parcel time when I am working full time, but want a different job? Really struggling to break this into bits. Uh, yeah, okay, they say break it. Through. Okay, how did you handle job search while working full time? It, it's tough and it's not, I mean, obviously you're not going to be able to put as much time into it. And so I can tell you that when I, you know, had the time to, <laughs> to devote to job search, it was much more, um, I was much more motivated and I was much more beneficial. The best advice I could give is to be as planful as you can. And maybe it's you, you allocate time. Hey, I'm going to spend, you know, six to nine o'clock this evening. I'm going to spend time, you know, on the job search. And, and not just chunking that time, but um, I think about this, you can waste a lot of time on social media, just scrolling through Facebook, Twitter, whatever. I mean, I, you guys may be like me where, you know, I'm watching TV and I'm scrolling through Twitter and an hour goes by and I'm like, what did I accomplish? I, I would say if you block that time, if you're a full timer looking for a career change, block your time and then try to as best you can 
kind of plan. Okay, I'm gonna spend six to nine o'clock on my job search and I'm gonna research these three companies. I think if you're disciplined in what you wanna accomplish, you'll be more efficient in how you use your time. So. All right, good, great advice, all righty. So our next question, uh, what advice do you have for someone who wants to be in corporate leadership? Is it, is it more experiences? Did you take any cert, uh, certificate courses besides your MBA to prepare you for your current role? You know, that's a good question that's probably um, gonna vary from company to company and role to role. So it may be tough for me to answer in a blanket uh, piece. You know, I, I would tell you that um, the experience is gonna be the, the primary thing that, that folks are looking for. Um, the one comment I would make, we do a lot of, I've done a lot of talent reviews um, in my day in HR. And, you know, it's not always the, the smartest or the, the most, you know, decorated employee who, who rises to a corporate executive or corporate leadership role. Um, a lot of times the gap is leadership um, or that emotional intelligence piece. Are people willing to follow them? They may have all the technical expertise and the experience and the skill set required and the certifications and GPA and all of that. Um, but in the end, it's, you know, will people follow them? Do people want to work with them? So I would say if, if there's, you know, things, you know, either as part of your current role, if your company sponsors some leadership training, um, or if that's something that you can pursue on your own or read articles, read books just on leadership and how to relate and become more well-versed in that, a lot of times that is oftentimes the barrier. Generally, it's not, well, they need to be a better accountant, marketer, so on and so forth to be in that corporate leadership role. It is, I mean, it sounds so obvious, but it is that leader, those leadership traits. Okay. All right. We have two more questions here and we'll uh, uh, kind of uh, call that the end of these. Okay. So the next question is, what is the proper way to get feedback? If you do, if you, if you don't, sorry, get the opportunity to move forward after a series of interviews. You know, that, that's a good, um, that's a good question. I, I so sometimes you may, you may face some resistance. Um, I don't find this to be quite as, as prevalent anymore, but I know early in my career, I was kind of, um, uh, you know, told, hey, be very vague and general in, in declinations because, you know, candidly, sometimes you're worried about a lawsuit maybe or something like that, right? The more you say, the more you might have to depend later. I think in general now, companies are more open to providing that feedback, understanding that generally candidates are just looking forward to learn. How do I learn so that I can, you know, refocus my efforts or do a better job next time in the selection process? If, if you're, so the first thing I would do is just to, to, to ask for it, right? I mean, ask for feedback. And this may be another area where persistence might, you know, matter. So if, if you if you asked for the feedback and didn't get it, or, or the feedback that you got maybe from the person who communicated the declination, if that's a recruiter, and it was like, well, that didn't, that wasn't very helpful. I, I might suggest, and this happens all the time with me, if you haven't already, connect with that person on LinkedIn. And, and maybe, you know, part of that connection is a follow-up of, hey, I'm still in the job search process, would still be very interested in your company and or a role like the one I interviewed, would welcome any feedback you have for me. What that also does is it puts a bug in their ear and, and keeps you connected for them because you never know, right? That same opportunity may become available, you know, three, six months down the road or even, or even less. So um, I hope that's, that's helpful, but I think some of it is, ask for it. And if you don't get what you're, you were hoping for initially, you know, maybe ask someone else. Okay. And our last question, um, how to handle the, re the no response from an application? Um, you know, of course, we're talking about robot systems, of course, and can um, the individual ask, can they reach out to an individual if they cannot find them on LinkedIn or general corporate phone number and ask HR? Yeah, um, I think, Honestly, anymore, probably LinkedIn is your best uh, option um, or, or a phone call, probably depending on the size of the company. So I would say definitely. I mean, you, this it gets back to that persistence piece. I, um, you know, the, the more information you can get, I would encourage you to follow up, reach out, see if you can learn anything. 
Um, again, I'm thinking of that success story where there were the four times and they were, you know, the first time it was a subcontractor that was hired, the next time it was a friend of a friend, whatever. Um, so, it, it, you know, don't assume that because you were declined that you weren't qualified. Um, so I would kind of give the same advice there is just reach out on LinkedIn if you can. If the first person that you reach out to doesn't, you know, accept your request or respond to your email, try somebody else, especially if it's one of those target companies that you have. You know, that's, I think, another key point here is, you know, the, the, the smaller your list of target companies can be, you might say, well, that, that limits my opportunity. And in a way, that's obviously right but it also might allow you to really invest more time building the right connections and doing the right follow-up with that core set of companies that's gonna increase your likelihood of getting a job, a job there. So um, it is hard because again, back to the, it might be a robot response. <laughs> um, it, it, you might've been, you know, the timing of your application was submitted and they were still accepting applications, but they actually made an offer that day and never reviewed your application. So. If you can get an answer there, great, um, but don't give up if, if you don't or don't on the first time. All right, John, well, that was our last question. This was an awesome presentation. I'm pretty sure that everyone agrees. Uh, so, of course, uh, all panelists, attendees, uh, if you have any feedback for John, feel free to put it in our chat box there. Give him all the congratulations. We certainly appreciate you. If you have any last words, you can take out time now uh, to say those before we transition into the other part of Job Club. No, I, again, appreciate the opportunity. Thanks, everyone, for your questions. Um, let me know, uh, reach out to me on LinkedIn and maybe help me out and put like CKY Job Club as the first <laughs> piece in your in your email. That way I, I, I promise you I'll, I'll accept uh, that invitation and best of luck um, with your career search. Thank you so much, John. We have plenty of gratitude here. Great session. Thank you for the great presentation. Thank you, John. Thank you all. Great presentation. So, so yeah, we all thank you thank and I uh, hope to talk to you soon. Great, thank you so much. All right, John. Hi. All righty, you guys. Okay, so we can move forward here to the next slide as we talk about who's hiring. So, uh, of course, attendees, uh, if we have any employers, I should say, here in the audience today, if you want to share those, you can share them in the, the chat box here. Uh, employ, sorry, employers with active job leads can click and raise their hand. Uh, click the raise hand function now, I'm sorry, and email us job leads by noon at UK alumni career at uky.edu and we'll include them in our post meeting job lead list. All right, so if you wanna take out time to do that now and we'll get that all taken care of for you or as I already mentioned, just put something there in the chat box. Alrighty. Hey, Nicole, it does look like we have an employer with their hand up today, Gerald Galinsky. I'm going to go ahead and promote you to a panelist now. I'm not well practiced in this one, so we'll see if we go. John, you should be able to unmute and turn on your camera if you like. You have one minute to share your active job lead. Hey, good morning, everyone. And, and uh, really thank you, uh, Amanda and Nicole, for uh, allowing me to share just a couple of things. Um, uh, my name is Jerry Galinsky. I've been to attending the the uh, UK job club for many years and and uh, just appreciate everything that you do so uh, as uh, I'm currently recruiting for state farm agents in the central and south central Kentucky area so if you know of anyone yourself or others that may be interested in being an entrepreneur and a business owner I'd love to talk to them in addition I am helping my uh, 43 independent contractor state farm agents uh, that are actively hiring for marketing and sales specialists. So if uh, the business ownership thing is a little bit more than what you want, or you're not sure, but love the idea of working with the uh, uh, number one uh, insurance company in America, please uh, uh, reach out to me on LinkedIn. We'll connect and uh, I'll uh, get you connected with the right folks, whether it's me or one of my agents, uh, depending on what localities you're looking for. So in a minute or less, Nicole, that's what I got. All right, Gerald, thank you so much. You guys, I hope you got that down. And uh, as he mentioned, um, I'll go to LinkedIn and, and definitely take advantage of that. So, all righty, uh, do we have any others before we transition? Any others? No. 
Hey, Nicole, I do see one more. Krista Martin. One more? Okay, all right. I'll stop Krista, video. I'm going to promote you up right now. Oop. Sorry, tech trouble, my end. Working on you, Krista. All right, promoting you to panelists now. All right, Krista, you should be able to unmute and turn your camera on. Thank you so much, ladies. And John, oh my goodness, he's so awesome. Uh, I was so glad to see him back here at Job Club, but my name is Krista Martin. I'm with the Kentucky Career Center's Kentucky Office of Vocational Rehabilitation and our employer services branch. And currently the Kentucky Personnel Cabinet has 218 positions throughout the state. A lot of them centrally located right here in the bluegrass, uh, obviously, with the capital right nearby Lexington. And for those of us that um, aren't from Kentucky on the call today, thanks for joining us. And that's what we've got uh, going on, Miss Amanda. So I encourage you to uh, check out those positions if you're interested in working for state government. And we also have a connection in the personnel cabinet for further resources and assistance with uh, your application, resume, et cetera. Thank you so much for sharing, Krista. All righty, okay. So as I mentioned, uh, we could definitely email those job leads, let's see here, um, to UK alumni at uky.edu before noon, and we'll make sure to get, be sure to get those posted if you were not able to share those at this time. Okay, so let's see here, let's move on to the good news here. Uh, let's see here, once again, uh, you guys, awesome presentation, but uh, we have, okay, some information here about corporate extension, I believe Diana, uh, it's going to speak about this. Hey, Nicole, sorry, Diana had to log out a little bit early. Okay. We'll share some information in the chat. We'll have Caroline, she's chat moderator today, okay. um, share some information. Ellie, you might have to go back one slide for Nicole's. I might have advanced yeah. too soon. Yeah, that's okay. All right. Yeah, if we can go back. Okay. And if we want to go to the next slide, and we'll just uh, briefly, um, I'll briefly speak with you about some vacant positions and steps uh, here in Human Resources at the University of Kentucky. Uh, there are several positions uh, open, um, actually 42 uh, at the moment. And so I definitely cannot list all of those, but I encourage you guys to visit uh, the UK Jobs webpage and click on temporary employment. And you will be able to see all of the different jobs that are available there. And we range from the jobs, I should say, range from um, medical positions to uh uh, administrative assistants, uh, let's see here, uh, RN, ultrasound, ex exercise consultants, IT specialists. We have a variety of positions that are open currently. So um, yeah, definitely take advantage of that. Go in, log in, and I'll get many of those sent to Amanda so that she can get those posted. But um, there are plenty. So you guys, please take advantage of that if you're interested. Alrighty, okay, so we can go on to the next slide. Uh, thank you all for attending again today. Awesome, thanks so much, Nicole. Just a few quick updates from UK Alumni Career Services. Our career management webinar series has a couple of upcoming programs. The adaptability factor, why flexibility is critical in the 2021 workplace, March the 17th. And on April the 21st, 21st coaching skills for leaders. I also wanna give you a little preview to a program that registration's coming soon. We're gonna be offering a free leadership week uh, offered via Zoom. We noticed many of our uh, UK uh, alum and uh, community members in the area have had professional development conferences canceled due to COVID-19. So we're, we're looking to offer some professional development for our community. So watch for this to be coming online soon. All right, last slide, Ellie. Um, coming up next time on Job Club, Yes, yes, that one. March the 9th, What Employers Want, presented by Dan Call. He's the Associate Director here at UK, um, and he's an Associate Professor, I think, over in the College of Public Health. Um, we're so glad that you'll join us today. We'll put the link for you to register in the chat box now. On behalf of the UK Alumni Association, the UK Fayette County Cooperative Extension, and UK HR Steps Temporary em Employment, thank you so much for logging into Job Club today. We hope to see you again on March the 9th.